Hi, I'm Judy Tayabji. Thank you very much for joining us today. Now today, a word of warning on the show, we have a lot of different segments for the show, but there's quite a bit of information coming at you, and I think most of it will be very useful. We're going under the heading of Crown Corporations. We'll be looking at ICBC in the coming weeks. We've talked about BC Hydro, and we'll revisit that in the future, and of course, we've talked about BC Transit. Today, a different Crown Corporation, the BC Ferries, and of course, this has been in the news now for some time. And it's been in the news because the government has, has announced that there will be some fare increases. And some islanders are not very happy about that. And they're planning a protest, but there's a lot beyond the protest. Uh, not just the fare increases, but also the debt that the ferry corporation is carrying. We want to show you this backgrounder first. No way, we won't pay. No way, we won't pay. Residents of the islands between the mainland and Vancouver Island are steaming mad about a 40% increase in their ferry fares. The move has sparked a flurry of protest actions and feelings by many that the government has betrayed them. Some of them went to the legislature to try to get the problem fixed, but that didn't work. We expect, and we were given a process, where we were to have input into the fare restructuring. Ultimately, that fare restructuring took place neither on the process nor on the timing that I have documentation that we were promised. Was there a sense of betrayal? Yeah, I think there was. You don't agree that it's a lifestyle choice to live on these islands? No, it's not a lifestyle choice. It's a choice made the same way you make your choice where to live. It's lifestyle, it's convenience, it's economic, it's real estate, it's what you like to do, it's where you like to live. It's, and to call it a lifestyle choice is to insult it. Well, we've had a couple of people on Quadra Island say that they have to sell their houses and move. I mean, if you're making a take-home pay of, say, 1200 1500 bucks a month, take 120 bucks a month off of that. And remember, that's on top of what you're already paying. It seriously affects your ability to pay and put food on the table. But the minister responsible, Dan Miller, won't back down. He's the minister who has put over $250 million into a failed pulp mill in his riding. But he says $50 million for ferries is out of line. Anything decided? Uh, no. Um, not, uh, not in any substantive detail. Uh, I think we had a good discussion. They really, from their point of view, said that they thought uh, the tariff increase uh, was a, a sort of a betrayal of the process. Uh, they felt that they had made a commitment to a process, which also included, by the way, tariff increases. They recognized that. Uh, but we're a bit unhappy about uh, this increase sort of being out of that process. <coughs> um, I said I recognize that and I would take uh, responsibility for that. This is not the last Dan Miller will hear on this issue. Protests up and down the coastline are expected to continue and even pick up steam. And today we have with us Vaughn Palmer from the Press Gallery to talk a little bit about some of the background to the fair hikes. And we also have two people who are involved in the protest that happens at 2 o'clock. We'll be back with your calls as well to this number. This holiday, only at Eaton's. Choose Poem or Tresor and receive free this four-piece Lancome bonus with lipstick and refillable spray. Eat at your favorite store. Eat this holiday from Eaton's. Experience the sense of Calvin Klein with this five-piece gift set. One for men, one for women. Yours for only $40. Been watching the free preview of the new cable package? We hope you've had a good laugh with the Comedy Network. Spent some quality time with History Television. And enjoyed some home life with Home and Garden Television Canada. Just three of the many channels in the new cable package. The free preview ends soon. To order, call 1-888-591-1997. You could win great prizes. So turn on, tune in, and enjoy. At one and a half, he started to slow down. At two, he was diagnosed. The next six months were pretty rough. But with a lot of help, we got through it. Please support BC's Children's Hospital. 
Your donations are measured in more than just dollars. Whoa! There's a blizzard coming your way! It's the famous Dairy Queen Blizzard Flavor Treat, and it's free! Because right now, when you purchase any super value meal at participating Dairy Queen stores, it comes with a free blizzard! Imagine, any 12-ounce Blizzard Flavor Treat, absolutely free, with a super value meal of your choice, including grilled chicken or ultimate homestyle burger, along with fries and a soft drink. Talk about super! For hot eats, cool treats, think DQ! And people who have to take BC ferries to get to some of the smaller islands are protesting today because of recent announcements from the government that their fares are going to go up dramatically. But what's behind this announcement? What exactly is the issue? That's one of the things we're going to be talking about today. And we have three people with us today. Some of you will remember Jim Abram from our discussion about lighthouses. Thanks for coming back. Okay. And Vaughn Palmer from the Press Gallery. Well, can I call you a news hound? Whatever you like. Okay, there you go. It's I'll call you an XMLA. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, boy, that's really, that's really low. Um, and he's going to give us some of the background, especially in the next segment, about some of the debt. And we also have with us Drew Thornburn, and you're from Salt Spring Island. Island, and you're uh, with the Stakeholders and Committee. And I'm with the, the uh, Stakeholder Process there, okay, yes. I want to start with you because uh, the Stakeholders Committee, we've been hearing a little bit about that lately. What is it? Well, Judy, BC Ferries uh, got into a, a, a process under Frank Rhodes where they wanted to talk to the communities about the changes that were happening. Now, he was the former president. He's he was the just former recently CEO. retired, right? Right. And um, in doing so, he asked for, or the, he went to the Islands Trust, and the Islands Trust, in the case of the Southern Gulf Islands, asked for five representatives from the five islands. And so there was somebody from the Chamber of Commerce, and there's somebody from the school board, and there's somebody that represents the general public, and there's mm -hmm. somebody that represents the people from the mainland or Vancouver Island who uh, come out to the islands on a, uh, a, a regular basis. So they're weekenders. Okay. Now, when you say that Islands Trust, some people may not realize that that's sort of a local government body that deals with uh, the Gulf Islands. Precisely, okay, yes. Okay. So, so, so it has some authority. It does. Okay. And uh, um, it's probably our major government when it comes to planning issues. Okay. So <clears throat> there were five islands, so that was 25 people came to this, this meeting. And uh, at the meeting also are five senior members of the BC Ferry Corporation, senior, senior management people. Right. And the, I, what we were trying to do is come up with a 10-year plan for the reorganization of the uh, ferry system. So this would have taken a lot of work. I mean, it's not like one meeting, half an hour, and you're done. This is something that's an ongoing process. We've been working on it for over three years. Wow. So just and give me an idea. How much time did you put in? I, it would be in the order of many weeks. Wow. Okay. So that's a lot of time. I want to bring yeah. Jim in as well, and, and we'll develop yeah. the story as we go. Now, Jim, uh, you're, you've helped organize this protest. And just so people don't think you're a professional protester, <laughs> why well, I do you, have a life. You do have a life, yeah. <laughs> Somewhere. Yeah. And, and why did you organize to protest or help? Well, I think that the government needs to understand the impact that this has on communities. You're and, from Quadra uh, Island. I'm from Quadra Island. I'm a local government representative there, regional district director. Right. And, uh, you know, this is the highway to our community, and it's really hurting our community and hurting other small communities up and down the island on other small islands. Uh, this is a, basically a commuter ferry. It is, as I said, part of the highway. Mm -hmm. um, the protest is to try and make the government understand the impact and trying to get the government to roll back the fare so we can get back into the stakeholder process. Okay, which is what so we're So we can actually about. talk. All right, mm -hmm. and I want to bring you in this, Vaughn. Um, we've seen the protest. We've heard already some of the comments from Dan Miller. You were saying before the show started that caucus is meeting today, meaning all the elected yes. NDP MLAs. What do you, what's your take on whether or not the government's going to be paying attention to what's happening just outside the rooms where they're meeting? Um, some of the members, Judy, are concerns. Uh, for example, Glenn Robertson, the member for North Island, because some of the islands are in his constituency. But in general, the Gulf Islands, because they're spread over a number of constituencies, and some of those constituencies are represented by the opposition, right. have not had the kind of political clout that, say, old pulp mill workers in Prince Rupert have. <laughs> Just for example. For example. Right. So uh, Dan Miller has already sort of tried to brush this off. Uh, do you think that if they keep making some noise that he'll change his mind? Well, I think that, you know, a certain amount of pressure can always get the government to change its mind. Uh, this government doesn't have uh, exactly have an iron grip on uh, the province with its slim majority in the legislature. So right. pressure can always work, but it hasn't gotten through so far. And clearly the, the protests haven't addressed um, 
the reasons the government created this situation in the first place. Okay, we'll get to some of that a little bit later. We're going to take a couple of quick calls and then we'll give some of the background that I've been referring to. We're going to start though with Joan on Cortez Island. Hi Joan. Hello. Hi, go ahead. Um, the reason I'm calling is that I'm, I'm terribly upset about the ferry increase. Cortez Island is going to have an 83% increase. Wow. Plus, we also what have... What is that in money, though, if you're going what to it, pay? I'm a pensioner. Right. And what it means for me, and this is an 83% increase every year for five years. And what it means Seriously? is that in the end of three money. years, I right. mean five years, right. I will be paying... $37.36 to go from um, my whale town residence mm -hmm. over to Harriet Bay. Right. And then I have to drive across Cortez, or, uh, Quadra Island mm -hmm. to Kwathiaski Cove, where I absorb another 11%. So that it, it, that ferry costs me fifteen fifty in five years. Okay. So that as a pensioner uh, traveling Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, where mm -hmm. I don't pay as a passenger, but I do pay for my vehicle. Right. My round trip back and forth to Campbell River to have dentures relined or to see the eye doctor or any right. of these things right. will cost me $52.86. Okay. And uh, there's another aspect that bothers me is that I haven't been able to see my family on the island for two years. Yeah. Presently, one car and two adults okay. in an ordinary undersized car cost $129 round wow. trip from Vancouver to Cortez Island and back. Wow. And if you're in an overheight, mm -hmm. it's $185.25. And this is in the off time. This isn't peak. Mm -hmm. And for every adult, it's twenty six fifty added, and with every child, it's thirteen fifty. So you can see yeah. that they, these increases are really preventing our own British Columbians yeah. from coming to the Gulf Islands for their holidays. Okay, well, I, have to, I have to stop you there, Joan, just because we want to make sure that the panel can respond to this. Um, now, in a case like this, Cortez Island is known as a tourist destination as well. So not only is it keeping BC families apart, it's probably going to have some impact on that. I, I'll go to you on this, Drew. As someone on the stakeholders committee, was this 83% increase, was that ever on the table of one of the no, things you discussed? No, uh, we specifically asked the uh, uh, minister not to go for fair increases. Oh, we sorry. felt that there are economies that could be made within the BC ferry, ferry system. We also pointed out to him that there's no... No businessman in his right mind would try to increase his uh, revenues by simply raising raising prices. I mean, if if you're in the furniture business and you're having a a, a, a bad time and your customers right. are dropping off, right? You don't raise your your prices. You basically want to bring more people to your system. Volume, volume, volume. Yeah. Isn't that and what if you're in the tourist is right. industry, yeah. you're trashing that industry. It's the last main one we've got going. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, just give you a little bit of background, then we'll take some more calls and we'll certainly allow everybody to have their say. But just to give you a little bit of an idea of what's happening with the ferry rate increases, it now costs up to $100 for a family of four to travel between the mainland and Vancouver Island on a return trip by car. That's up from around $62 five years ago in 1992. And for residents of the Gulf Islands, the increase on a book of tickets is as high as 40%, or as we just heard, it could be 83%. The Ferry Corporation says the smaller routes have been losing up to $45 million a year, something they're disputing, and that they've been subsidized by paying passengers on the larger routes. And the Ferry Corporation reports a deficit last year of $29.9 million, which they claim is 10 times the deficit of just a year before. A large part of the problem has been a cutting of the subsidy the government has traditionally paid the Ferry Corporation, which we'll show you a little later. And we'll go over those in detail, but in a nutshell, that subsidy was about $51 million in 1991-92 and has dropped to only $4.7 million now. The Ferry Corporation is on a five-year mission to boldly recover as much operating cost as possible. The goal appears to be to make sure each route pays for itself. And uh, I I'm actually, I want to ask you a question on that, Vaughn. In terms of public policy that you've seen in the years that you've been in the press gallery, uh, how how good an idea is it to say, okay, well, you're a crown corporation and you're going to pay for yourself now? Well, 
some commercial crown corporations like BC Hydro have been able to pay for themselves. Right. But the ferry corporation was not set up to pay for itself. It was set up as part of the highway system with a principle built in at the beginning that it would be subsidized. Right. And the government has taken that subsidy and, and as you just pointed out, wiped it out. One of the little numbers that pops out every now and then that's worth citing is that the federal government's subsidy for the provincial ferry system is five times the provincial government subsidy. So they used to be roughly go? equal. <laughs> Does that go yeah. into the ferry corporation? Oh yeah, it goes into the ferry corporation. Okay. But I mean, so Ottawa, which we're always bashing for one reason or another, and right. often for a good reason, yeah. in the case of the ferry system, is now five times the subsidy of the provincial government. Well, what right. justification is there for that? They used to be about equal. Right. And if they were about equal, still, we wouldn't be in this crisis. Okay, I'm going to let you answer the next one, uh, Jim, but I'm going to talk now to Paul in Victoria. Hi, Paul. Hi, Judy. Hi, go ahead. Um, it's good to be on your show. Yeah. There's, first of all, I'd like to say that there should be no free lunch. If you want to live on a fantasy island, right. then perhaps you need to pay the price. Okay. Um, people on the islands know that they're being subsidized and perhaps moved there on that assumption. So maybe there should be a grandfathering for residents so that you give them five years, they can make up their mind whether or not they want to move or stay and pay the higher rates. Okay. The other thing that I think they should do definitely is, can, is look at privatizing the ferries or at least the food services. Just as an example, uh, I work as a computer programmer mm -hmm. uh, for a very uh, competitive software company, and I make less money per hour than the guy that cleans the tables uh, on the BC Ferry route between uh, Vancouver and the Lower Mainland, or v Vancouver and Vancouver Island. Okay, well, thank you for, uh, for those perspectives. Uh, do you have an opinion on that, Jim? Well, it's interesting that people are always bringing up the fact that we're a bunch of whiners on the islands looking for free lunch. Right. Um, if you look at what goes on in the rest of the province with things like the Vancouver Regional Transit System, right. operating costs around $505 million a year. We're going to show them some of those in detail. Provincial later. contributions, yeah. $237, uh, $237 million a year. And, and, and so on and on and on. 237 you know. as opposed to what? You guys are asking for about $50 million. $5 million. $5 million now. The operating costs. costs. Yeah. Right. But in a, in a case like that, when they say uh, Fantasy Island, uh, do you do the, the comparison with the highways, if it's still part of the highway system? The, the uh, highway equivalency subsidy that used to be in place uh, seemed to you know, fit quite nicely. You get uh, an equivalent amount for whatever the length of your ferry run is mm -hmm. to maintain that highway right. in, a, in a year's time, and that would go towards that, the operation of that ferry. You had a comment as well, Bob? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, there was somebody who worked out the West Coast Express, which is the new train service, commuter train service that runs through mostly NDP ridings outside the city of Vancouver. Although that's and probably a coincidence. Yeah, it's probably a yeah. coincidence. They worked out if the, per, if the per rider subsidy on the West Coast Express were applied to the BC Ferry Corporation, the BC Ferry Corporation's annual subsidy would be $300 million. Wow. So there's a proportion. I mean, if you, what's the subsidy on the new Vancouver Island Highway? It was a billion two. We know it costs more because of the way they built it, mm -hmm. uh, for various political reasons. So, what's the subsidy there? I mean, I, the principle of no subsidy is fine, but let's understand for starters that all transportation in the province is subsidized by the government. So right. we're really just arguing about the price. Okay. Well, we have to take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll take more of your calls, and we'll also show you a bit more detail about uh, the whole subsidy question. Tayab She is brought to you in part by Metro Lexus Toyota, leaders in customer satisfaction. Hey, don't switch that dial, because this is going to make you smile. See these warm, toasty sweaters for your family? At 30% off, put them under your tree. And comfy, cozy robes, all at 25% off now. And only at Eaton's. Wow! 30% off men's dress shirts and ties. There's Christian Dior, Arrow, and Hathaway in distinction for all you guys. And there's me, Mr. Magical Moose. <laughs> only $9.93. What I'm about to show you could dramatically change the way you think about caring for your teeth. This special light shows the hard to reach places your toothbrush may not reach, where problems can start. You need protection here. Introducing new Crest MultiCare. With brushing, it helps fight tartar and cavities. And MultiCare's foaming action delivers fluoride protection to expose spaces between teeth, where it's difficult for your toothbrush to reach. New Crest MultiCare, the Crest way to protect hard to reach places. 
New Ultra Downy introduces Downy Care. You get more than fluffy softness, now it helps keep clothes looking like new. Keep the new look of it, that's the way you love it. New Ultra Downy cares for bright cottons in the rinse cycle. Over time, it helps keep them looking more like new. Keep the new look of it, take the best care of it. Only Downy does it, come on in. And only Downy has the Ultra Downy ball. Toss it in for Downy's best fabric care ever, Downy Care. Hi. Hi. Oh, that's a new addition to the family. Oh, just beautiful. Got ABS oh. brakes, easier access than ever, side door impact beam, 40 standard safety features, and it's got a five-star rating and front-end crash test. And right now, Windstar comes with an all-star deal with our new 98 model and only $249 a month, but only at your BC Ford and Mercury dealer and only for a limited time. And how about that gorgeous little baby? He likes it, too. And just before we go back to the phones, we want to give you an idea about the process of subsidies and also long-term debt. And I, if you're anything like me, I was pretty shocked when I actually sat down and put these numbers together. But let's take a look and see about the budget of the BC Ferries, which was slowly transformed under Glenn Clark's direction. First as the Minister of Finance, then as Minister of Employment and Investment, and now as Premier. A quick history of the last six years looks like this. In 1991-92, the last year of social credit, BC Ferries was under the Ministry of Finance, and in this budget, operational and capital expenditures were listed. For operations, including staffing and running the ferries, they had $33.6 million, and capital expenditures, including building, docks, ferries, uh, facilities, and new ferries, had $22.2 million. In 92-93, the first Glenn Clark budget, Operations fell by about $10 million to $23.5 million, while capital expenditures increased slightly to $26.2 million. In 1993-94, a change in the budget put operational money at a mere $3,000, with $4.8 million in asset acquisitions and $36.8 million in grants and contributions. Still a drop. In 1994-95, this dropped again by $5 million, 3,000 for operations, 4.8 million for asset acquisitions, and 31.35 million for grants and contributions. In 1995-96, the budget changed again. There was only one line, and it read grants and contributions, 9.35 million dollars. In 1996-97, grants and contributions dropped to 4.7 million, which is where it stayed for 1997-98, and the government is now proposing that there be no subsidy for 1998-99. Meanwhile. The BC Ferry Corporation's long-term debt has risen since Glenn Clark took power. In 1991, it was 14.4 million. It jumped to 157.6 million in 1992, doubled to 393.4 million in 1995, and continued to skyrocket to 463.6 million in 1996. It is estimated to be about 700 million now and is rising to an anticipated debt of close to $1 billion within the next year. A big portion of this debt is from the construction of the NDP's aluminum catamaran ferries, also called Fast Cats. And, uh, this is where I really wanted you to come in, Vaughn. How does something go from $14 million to, I think, the last order in council authorized them to borrow $1 billion? Well, they're building a whole bunch of new ferries, and they've decided to pay for them. Um, out of the ferry corporation's own debt and borrowing capacity. What did they do before? Uh, through general revenue or something? Uh, for a long time, the ferries, uh, sometimes the ferries were, were built on a pay-as-you-go basis, the same way as highways used to be. Mm -hmm. And the province used to have a lot more money for this kind of stuff. We were a rich province, and the uh, health and education and social safety net weren't as expensive. So if you go back 20 or 30 years, we were spending more as a proportion on highways and more as a proportion on, on construction of things. So it's partly that. But when they say, you know, they need a long-term plan right. for the ferry service, and, right. and Dan Miller has been saying that, right. I think it's pretty clear that they had a long-term plan. I think that if you said that you were going to take a company and you were going to increase its debt by 20, a factor of 25, because the debt is going to be 25 times as big as it was. Right. And you're going to cut its subsidy from 50 million down to 5 million. You're not going to do anything about the operating costs. Right. 
and you're going to raise the fares so much that people stop traveling on the ferries because that's what's been happening. The ridership has gone and it's leveled off. Right? Okay. So if, if you're going to do that, what's the result going to be? You're going to bankrupt the company. Right. And that's what they've done. And it has to be deliberate because the same minister is in charge from the beginning. Glenn Clark takes over as Minister of Finance. He does all of this when he's finance minister. He switches to employment investment. He takes BC Ferries with him. He takes him. BC Ferries with him. Yeah. So the one minister, who is now the premier, made all these decisions. He made the decision on the debt. He made the decision on the subsidy. He made the decision on operating costs. And he made the decision on fares. But why would he want to bankrupt BC Ferries? You want to build a bridge or something? I mean, that, that seems... Uh, I nice. guess to get as much money as you could out of it without facing the consequences. Oh, well, no. And I think, you know, this comment that some of the callers, that one caller made about, you know, cottage dwellers on the island, I think we should allow for the possibility that um, Glenn Clark is the East End working class Vancouver guy. He may well view a number of the Gulf Islands in those terms as places where rich people on the west side of Vancouver have their cottages. Oh. He may not see Quadra and Cortez and Hornby and Denman as a islands where people also live. Okay. Okay, we're going to take two calls in a row, and uh, we'll start with Bob and Gibsons. Hi, Bob. Hi, dear. Yes, hi. Bob Jones and Gibsons oh, calling. Oh, hi, Bob. Yeah. Um, I think you, when you get into the financial statements and you start looking there, the, the question you've got to ask is, is honesty. Mm -hmm. And the one number I, I challenge anybody to find in those financial statements for the 96-97 annual report is the amount of the provincial subsidy. Right. That number does not appear. It's $4.7 million, mm -hmm. uh, as Vaughn alluded to earlier. If you look at the freebies, the uh, seniors grant, the health care grant, uh, et cetera, the, the free fares that BC Ferries costs up, mm -hmm. that's $8.5 million. The contribution to the fast cuts with the province, uh, yeah. Glenn Clark always claims he's paying for, that's $9.7 million. How ludicrous this tariff increase is, right now going into the low season, walking on board as a foot passenger, you're paying more on the Langdell to Horseshoe Bay run than any other South Coast run. Mm -hmm. It costs more to go to Gibson's than it does to go to Nanaimo. Okay, well thank you for that comment. Um, now, what is he talking about when he talks about those hidden subsidies? Well, the ferry's uh, financial statements don't really make it clear as you look at it over the years um, how much some of the things the government's forced on the ferry corporation has actually cost. And he mentions what's what's the seniors' discount cost? It's a it's it's something the government has said as a matter of policy is available. Maybe mm -hmm. it should be, but what does that cost the ferry corporation? Mm -hmm. uh, so he's raising that. He's also raising the issue of what's the provincial subsidy. Some years it's crystal clear; it's right there in front of you. And Other years they've rolled it together with a federal subsidy, and you can't figure out which yeah. is which. I had a hard time even finding some of the numbers for BC Ferries uh, for one year, where it just disappeared altogether. Uh, yeah. It was hidden buried in the ministry. I, I know that you, you want. I just to want to say. Something on that, on that, uh, the seniors and school kids and all that. You know, that's been that's been carried by the ferry corporation by the riders. That has been paid for by us. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's just been absorbed by that, other people. That's something that the ministries responsible, such as health, education, seniors, should have been paying to the corporation. Oh, and now I we're see. getting okay. now we're getting this big uh, to do from Minister Miller saying, well, the, the government's going to look at giving subsidies for these three things. Well, mm -hmm. big deal. They should have been all along. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll take more of your calls. We'll try to get a, a, quite a few in, and uh, we're talking about BC Ferry Corporation. I'm never at home. Why would I leave my phone there? What do you get with Amigo Digital? Every month, you get 100 anytime minutes and 100 first incoming minutes free. Yeah, I'm free. Free. You get call display. Staying in touch doesn't mean staying in. And oh yeah, there's no long-term contract. I call shots. And you get it all for just $19.95 a month. Amigo Digital. It goes with you. Eaton. This holiday from Eaton's. Discover the new fragrance, So de la Renta. And receive absolutely free this incredible five-piece gift set. Eaton. The Make-A-Wish Foundation of Canada makes wishes come true for children with life-threatening illnesses. Tara's wish was that her dog, Boomer, 
appear in a national television commercial. WIC is a corporate parent to this and 20 other television and radio stations across Canada. We support the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Like you, we care about this community. So anyway, this is Boomer, and this is Tara, and this is a wish come true. The international hit comedy, The Number 14, rolls into town December 3rd through 21st at only one stop, the Belfry Theatre. Some performances are sold out, so call now and book your tickets for this smash hit comedy. The Number 14 at the Belfry. Don't miss the bus. Last year, over 150,000 animals like this kitten were born and abandoned. Have your pet spayed or neutered. Call your veterinarian or animal shelter now for information. A message from Canada's Veterinarians and Humane Societies. And our question of the day today, what do you think of the ferry rate increases and should the smaller routes be subsidized? And here are some of your opinions. To a degree, yes. And I just think that it's getting a little too high for myself as a businessman. I have to increase my prices right now because of the, the fact that it's like fourteen twenty-five per ride, you know? It's ridiculous. Why? Why? Because um, it's not fair. It's just outrageous that it would cost that for going to the hospital or doctor's appointments when you've got children. It's, it is very, very hard. Even I work, my husband works. And, you know, to come over to Campbell River every day to work, whether or not you buy a bucket of tickets, every two weeks is a good couple of hundred with two people working. I think they're a little extreme. Uh, I know the ferries, well, it makes it tough for people to live on the island. Uh, and in some ways I can see the point of increasing the fares. But on the other hand, for people that have to use the ferry on a regular basis, it makes it a real hardship. Do you think the uh, smaller routes should be subsidized? Definitely smaller routes should be subsidized. And uh, we promised that we were going to show you some of the things that our guests were talking about with respect to how the provincial government decides what it's going to subsidize. And this is something that Drew will be speaking to. But you should know that the provincial government subsidizes transit in other areas, and rather well. The Vancouver Regional Transit System, buses and SkyTrain are subsidized to the tune of $237 million. The Victoria Transit System gets $14 million. And transit systems in the rest of the province are together subsidized by $19 million. On the mainland, the West Coast Express commuter train is propped up by a $29 million provincial subsidy. And the inland ferry system over lakes and rivers gets $17 million and charges no fee to carry vehicles and passengers. And that gives a little bit of an idea of, of what's happening. Now, Drew, um, when you were in your stakeholder meeting, did, did this come up? Was this one of the things you were referring to? Yeah, you know, the, when, when we uh, started off, we were dealing with the individual ferry, ferry systems. Uh, <clears throat> and we were also very concerned about the uh, overheads. They, they spend $50 million per year on administrative overheads, and those accounts 50 are not... $50 million administration in BC ferries? Yep, per year. $50 million? Yep. And we've been, in the that's cost allocation money. group, we've been trying to understand how that's broken down. Right. And to the credit of the ferry corporation, because I don't think this should be a bash, bash the BC ferry corp right. uh, sort of program, the, um, they have trimmed $10 million out of that 50 million okay. in this coming year, last year and this, this coming year. Okay. So they're starting to make some major progress there. Okay. But we've also asked them, what about generating more income from other, other sources? Right. What can we do to increase the uh, utilization of these, these ferries? There's a whole different set of issues about generating more, more income, and they haven't okay. got to that. Okay, what we're going to do now is take a, a number of calls in a row. And w uh, another thing we'd like to also ask the callers is, what would you say to uh, Dan Miller, if you could talk to him right now? And who knows, maybe a communications person is, is watching the show. Let's talk to Graham first on Thetis Island. Hi, Graham. Hi, Hi Graham. Judy. Yeah. Um, what I would like to say to Dan Miller is that uh, I totally agree with Vaughn Palmer's analysis of the situation. Mm -hmm. He put it very eloquently, far more so than I could do. Mm -hmm. And I'd just like to reinforce what he said by pointing out that 
as a retiree on a fixed income, my only choice faced with these kinds of fare increases is to start leaving a vehicle on the main island. Right. And um, that way, actually reducing the amount I pay to the ferry corporation. Right. Okay. We've been told by our island representatives that um, the population of the Gulf Islands is too small. Right. Or has been told this by the government, I should say. Right. That we just don't matter. And we, we're just here to make sure that we are heard. We do matter. Okay. Well, thank you very much for saying that. And uh, I'll let our panel comment on that in just a sec. I think he was talking about your comment about bankrupt, bankrupting the corporation. Um, but let's first talk to Dean in Gibsons. Hi, Dean. How you doing? Fine, thanks. Uh, first of all, what I'd like to say to Dan Miller is this. Being on the Sunshine Coast, this is the only uh, profitable or productive route in the B.C. ferry system. Right. So if the ultimate goal is uh, having each route pay for itself, well, you can start by leaving us alone because we're doing that. Right. But I think the issue here is is that uh, BC, British Columbians are reacting to multiple tariff increases, and they're not looking at, uh, at this situation of being almost a billion dollars in debt and right. who's accountable for that. Why, were, why was the NDP a government allowed to legislate or vote through Increase, increase borrowing power in the first place. Right. And looking at a billion dollars debt, in whose lifetime do we think that that debt's going to be paid off and how and who's going to pay? It's going to be us. Right. Well, I think that's a very well said. Um, I'll take one more call and then I'll let the panel respond to that. And let's talk to Margaret in Victoria. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Judy. Hi. I'm damn angry because I only have one son. Mm -hmm. He lives in Vancouver. Right. And when he, he's come to see me once in six months because of the rate, which, which was $70 return. Right. And now that the rate has gone up, I won't even see him for Christmas. He cannot <laughs> afford to come across anymore. My message to Dan Miller is I would like to see him trade places with my son when it comes to paychecks. Right. Thank you. Okay, well, then I can bet a lot of people can relate to that. Um, I'll start with Yvonne because you're the first person who had called in referred to your comment, uh, and also the, the idea of legislating the $1 billion. How did that, what, what well, happened the, there? the billion dollars was contained in one of those marvelous miscellaneous statutes amendment acts that we got late in the legislature session, late one afternoon. There was 50 items in the bill probably. Right. Uh, the opposition uh, parties raised it briefly, but it's one of a number of things they had to argue about. Right. And look, um, the fast ferries are under construction. Uh, the other ferries that this billion dollars is accounted for uh, are committed, and the money is being borrowed. Right. So unless you want a building in Vancouver with an aluminum ferry in it that's either two-thirds finished or three-quarters finished, mm -hmm. and the rest of the aluminum sitting there, you're going to have to borrow the money to pay for it. In it's for a little a late to do pound, anything now. I guess, eh? yeah. Yeah. Okay, and, and Jim, any comments? Well, just on that one, I think Vaughn pointed out also um, in an earlier article about the, the debt, the, the interest on that, you know, the $33 million dollars. Right. per year, I believe it was. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's absurd, you know, to go into that kind of debt. Yeah. Judy, um, we, we have to ask if uh, Dan, Dan Miller is going to put 40% in, in increases in the Van, Vancouver Regional Transit System, or is he going to uh, start um, raising the fares for the Handy Dart System? Right. And why is he picking on the ferries? I mean, where does this come from? Where is the rationale for it? Okay, I'm going to try and take another call. Thank you for some good questions, and maybe in the next segment we'll also talk about what to expect this afternoon. But uh, we'd like to talk now to Della in Chilliwack. Hi, Della. Hi there. Hi. Um, I just like to say that the taxpayers at this time it would be a little too quick to hard judge the government and their, and their spending decisions. Right. Um, we live in one of the more, you'd say, unified, stable countries in the world, mm -hmm. and it's because of the system that we have put together. Mm -hmm. Um. Also, you know, they do have to consider all the, um, uh, the you know, everything they have to put out to put the ferries running. Okay. In, in example, u unions, you know, right. they're they're the one of the biggest people that um, are, you know, they get an outrageous amount of um, pay. I'm sure okay. um, they have to pay for that, uh, or we as taxpayers pay for that. I'm sure. Okay, well, thank you, Della. I uh, just want to let Drew answer that. Um, what do you say to the rest of the public who may have absolutely no interest in the ferries about, for example, fiscal responsibility when it comes to the subsidy? Well, I think uh, other people in their own home, home system, say you, you lived up in uh, uh, Whistler, how would you feel if the uh, highway system was closed at 9 o'clock? Right. 
uh, how would you feel if you went through a, 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 a toll gate every time you went up and every time you, you went down? Or you were on the island highway and the same sort of things happen. Right. It just doesn't make any rational sense. Okay. We have to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be talking to our two protester guys about what's going on this afternoon. We'll be right back. Morehouse key tags are a symbol of our work for child amputees. Through the CHAMP program, children receive the artificial limbs they need to lead active lives. As they grow up, the war apps will be there, providing information, guidance, and so much more. The war apps, amputees helping amputees. Thanks to your support of the key tag service, lost key return now by courier. Me, 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 here it goes. <laughs> hey, Mom. Hi, guys. Hey. Worked up a sweat, huh? Yeah, sort of. You got anything interesting? Right, we got pop, orange, purple stuff. Let me see you. Yeah. Right. Tastes like orange and tangerine. Mine. And it's got vitamins A, B1, and C. Yeah. Excellent. Hey, good service. <laughs> hey, way to go, Mom. Right. Sunny Delight is here. It's goodness kids go for. I knew there had to be a perfectly good explanation why my regular pad didn't work as well at night. It wasn't made to work when I'm lying down. Then I tried new, always ultra-thin overnights. They're so thin and so much better because when I lie down, they cover more of the places my regular pad misses. They're longer front to back with wings that cover side to side. So I get better protection where I need it all night long. Very smart. New, always ultra-thin overnights. Better coverage for better overnight protection. This holiday only at Eden's. Choose Poem or Tresor and receive free this four-piece Lancome bonus with lipstick and refillable spray. Eat at your favorite store. Eat this holiday from Eden's. Experience the sense of Calvin Klein with this five-piece gift set. One for men, one for women. Yours for only $40. Eat at your favorite store. Question of the day today, what do you think of the ferry rate increases and should the smaller routes be subsidized? And here's some more comments from you. For me, I don't take the ferry that often, but I think it's pretty unfair for a lot of people that actually depend on it, especially the people with kids and stuff like that. People have to work, you know? Yeah. So it uh, certainly adds a lot of expense getting back and forth to work. Actually, we were just discussing this. Uh, Kelly was thinking about taking a, another job on the island there, and it would end up costing her over $300 a month just in ferry fees now to come back and forth so uh, it's either buy a camper and stay in it or <laughs> I really don't know it seems to be pre presenting a problem for most people what do you think of the new fare increases well as an islander I hate them um, we can't afford it uh, we believe that we're one of the few areas of the province that isn't getting a subsidy to our transportation system and uh, we don't understand why we're being treated differently than other parts of the province. Very articulate comment. And we're going to take uh, some calls and then we'll talk to our, our uh, guests about the protest this afternoon. We'll start with Donica in Qualicum Beach. Hi, Donica. Hi, it's, it's Don Donna. Oh, sorry, Donna. I was thinking, geez, that's an interesting name. But Donna's a nice name, too. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Um, I just wanted to, um, to let you know, Dan Miller know if he's listening um, that um, I you know, gave birth to a, a little boy here five months ago. Right. And as a single-income family, um, my son has never met his grandparents over in on the mainland. Oh, how um, important. It's, you know, it, it's been horrible for our family. You know, we've been planning a trip since last Christmas. Right. And, you know, we're planning on leaving next week, and it's getting to the point where, well, how are we going to get there? We, we can't get there. We, we have no way of paying for this. Right. And so I had a solution of, or, a, you know, a suggestion, more like, um, maybe a, a reduced fare, um, round-trip fare for, for people like us who travel, you know, the Duke Point to Tawasson Run, and, right. you know, and for commercial fares, obviously, too. My dad drives a truck, and this is hurting his business as well. Okay. Well, thank you for that, uh, for that comment. And uh, when you were doing your stakeholders committee meeting, that Duke Point terminal, that new terminal, the Tawasson Run, 
Uh, were there any comments about maybe making some runs commercial runs and, and lower cost runs? Well, the uh, commercial runs are, are those between Sawasan and Swartz and Horseshoe Bay and Nanaimo. And it has been put out by the Ferry Corporation, basically, that those runs generate more money than they cost. Mm -hmm. What we're finding is when we, when we get into the books that we don't think that that's so. The stakeholders are pretty well convinced that, uh, if anything, they're losing money on those major commercial routes. Okay. I'm going to try and take a couple of calls and then uh, we'll get some more comments here. We'll start with Anne on Texada Island. Hi, Anne. Hi. Anna? What am I getting all these wrong? Okay. <laughs> yes, it's Anna. Hi, Anna. I'd like to uh, reply, first of all, to that caller from Victoria who mentioned Fantasy Island. Right. I think he's the one that's living in a fantasy world. Um, here on Texada, right. we're an industrial island. Right. Limestone mining. I know uh, our house uh, in Powell River looks right over at Texada. Right, yeah. right. So there you go. Okay, um, Vancouver is paved with cement made from the limestone of Texada Island. Right. And it's a working class island, mainly uh, single income families. Right. And I haven't seen any mansions on this island. Right, and you're facing some pretty stiff fare increases. It's been approximately 43% this year. Right. And I would just like to ask Dan Miller how he would like to pay $20 or more. Uh, it would be more with a child, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, just to pick up his dry cleaning after work or to take his child to uh, baseball practice. Right, because actually, doesn't the, hasn't the provincial government set it up so some of the schooling is being done in Powell River? I mean, you, your kids have to go back and forth all the time. That's right. If you want to see the yeah. child's teacher, yeah. you've got to go to Powell River. We don't have a bank machine. We don't have anywhere to buy clothing. Right. And our route is only 4 point, let me see here, 4.4 nautical miles. Right. And I've got a chart here showing what they pay at Balfour Kootenay Bay, which okay. is a 5 nautical mile route. Right. They pay zero. Right. Okay, well, thank you very much for that. Uh, I'll take one more, and then maybe we'll let the panel comment. And Bill in Victoria. Yeah, hi, Judy. Good afternoon, panel. Yeah. I'd like to know, as a public uh, taxpayer, uh, how we could go about conducting an internal audit on uh, management spending practices and procedures. Right. Uh, their wasteful spending is atrocious, uh, from what I can see. Okay. I think that's an excellent comment. And, in fact, uh, I believe there was a call for an audit uh, last week, and the Auditor General said he would make a decision soon. Yes, uh, George George Morfitt was written on the, the December 2nd right. asking for uh, a forensic audit. But what we're really looking for is value for money. Right. Is that money well, well spent? Uh, and we hope that that will be taken up soon. Okay. And Vaughn, are there precedents for that sort of thing where there's a public call oh, yeah. for an audit? Very much so. And the Auditor General could answer questions, for example, like how much of the debt load of the Ferry Corporation is the new expansion? which has nothing to do with any of the Gulf Islands. It's right. all for the main routes. Right. How much of the administrative headquarters cost is those main routes that supposedly make the money? Right. And another interesting question would be, what's the principle on which the interior ferries are free <laughs> And the coastal hey, I'm ones. from the interior. I got to say, those ferries yeah. are really good ferries. Yes, they are. <laughs> they used to say it was because some were salt really? water and some were fresh water. I, I, I always wondered, what was the principle they were saying? I, I think the truth is it was because those used to be rivers, and they flooded them with the dams. And so they told people that they could have free ferries as a result. So that's like 30 years ago. But so it's yeah. history. Yeah. Uh, that's what I think, which doesn't mean it's good today. But anyway. Um, okay, and when we come back from the break, we're going to talk to Jim about the protest. And we'll be right back. Sweetie, how's LA? <laughs> yeah, they do that there. Yeah, the place is looking fine. Pretty empty though. Any chance you could hop on a plane? Be here for Christmas? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I miss you too. Uh, there's someone at the door. This holiday only at Eden's. Choose Poem or Tresor and receive free this four-piece Lancome bonus with lipstick and refillable spray. Tfau, the number one brand of non-stick cookware, is about to change cooking with this exclusive anti-warping stainless steel disc. This is Armorau. 
Inside, Armorel's new granite texture is even more scratch resistant. The result, a non-stick pan designed to last even longer, both on the inside and on the outside. Armorel from Tefal, available at Canadian Tire, major department stores and most other fine houseware retailers in Canada. Unexpected treasures await you at the gallery shop in the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria. See unique items from around the province and around the world. The gallery shop offers an extraordinary shopping experience away from the hustle and bustle where parking is free and plentiful. With prices starting from $2, you'll find everything from stocking stuffers and home decorations to major gifts. Life is about giving. The gallery shop at the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria just makes it affordable. It's here. Check TV tonight at 8 for JAG, which means Judge Advocate General, Navy officers who serve on the Navy's legal staff. Now, if you want to know what Angels, Bingo, HUD, and Huey stand for, you'll just have to watch. JAG, tonight at 8. It's here. Check TV. Coming up tomorrow, we give you an update on the hepatitis, hepatitis C situation. We'll be doing a light show on Christmas shopping on Thursday, and then the International Children's Day of Broadcasting. We've allowed some students to pick a subject that they are interested in, and we get to hear from them on that, and that's a UNICEF project. And we'll go to the phones, and, and then you'll have to tell us about the protest, because this is actually our last segment. But let's hear first from Jennifer on Gabriella Island. Hi, Jennifer. Hello, Judy. Hi. Um, I think you're a bit wrong about why there are some free and why there are some ferries that pay. Okay. I was involved in a ferry protest about 14 years ago right. where they wanted to charge for bicycle fares. Right. Now, the thing there was we felt that wasn't fair because there were no facilities for bicycles. There was no um, place to put them on the actual ferries. Right. So we won that. They never actually wrote us a letter back, but we had a 1,200-person petition signed. Right. And when we looked at it, we found that all of the uh, free ferries were in Socred territory, and <laughs> all of the Gulf Island ferries at the time were in NDP territory. Oh, see, you're so more cynical than I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why I'm phoning is this. I feel that uh, I, when I moved to Gabriola about 15 years ago, right. it was simply because it was a place that I found that I could actually live. I lived in Montreal and Toronto and Vancouver and Victoria. Right. And when I came to, to Gabriel Island, I did not think I was getting a free ride because there was effectively a toll there. Right. I have been paying this toll for the last 14, 15 years. Right. I have never really thought there was anything wrong with this. What I find wrong is when this toll goes up so high that it makes impossible the situation for so many people who do live here. Okay. Well, and uh, I also feel like in this particular case, we are being discriminated against. I really starting. I'm starting to feel it quite strongly. Okay. Well, thank you for that comment, and uh, I'm going to take one more call, and then I'll, I'll talk to uh, to Jim. Let's talk to Tony in Victoria. Hi, Tony. Hi, hi Judy. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. Go Good. Ahead. Um, I just want to say that uh, I was involved a couple of years ago in the in the big trucker strike up at Nanaimo when mm -hmm. we uh, we basically shut down the terminal for you know a day or pretty close. Right. Um, and I think Mr. Dan Miller should watch his p's and q's because uh, I'm. From what I've been hearing on the island, that you know the boys just might do it again. Mm -hmm. um, it's I haul produce and uh, groceries from Vancouver to Victoria, and then I go to the smaller islands, uh, Quadra and that. And just in my cost alone, it's costing me over you know pr approximately close to a hundred dollars just because of the you know the recent increase, right? Which of course is being you know it's being passed on to the store. Everybody else, so it adds to the inflation. That's right. Right. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Now, I've been promising that you're going to, you've been so quiet compared to how you I've normally are. i trying to be good. It's right. Uh, so comments on those two callers and also about the protest this afternoon. The last one was great. I think uh, that leads right into the protest. This is only the beginning. You know, this, this person just talked about, uh, better watch out, they might do it again. Right. Um, if this doesn't work today, there's more plans, and this will continue to harass the NDP government until the next election. Okay, now, as far as the protest this afternoon, there's something about ringing the buildings, or like uh, yes. standing around the buildings? Is that right, Drew? Or well, there? there's been talk of ringing the building and uh, making sure that the people inside the building understand what it feels like to be on an island. Oh, possibly, I get it. Possibly That's charging it's them an arbitrary $15 each to get out, <laughs> uh, which is basically what we're told to do. Right. Uh, but this, this protest is about getting the fares rolled back, and it's about making sure that the minister doesn't make any more statements that say that islanders don't matter. Okay, let's uh, take a call from Jerry on Quadra Island, where you're from. Hi, Jerry. Hi. Hi, go ahead. Yeah, I'd just like to make a comment on uh, 
a couple of things. The first one is the fellow that phoned in from Victoria. He said, uh, why don't you just sell your home and move off? Right. Well, I'm going to tell you, now that this ferry rate's gone up, uh, it's pretty damn hard to sell our home. Who's going to come over here and live? And secondly, uh, Quadra Island is, uh, is a tourist uh, center, and, and last year we right. had over 2,000 overruns with uh, tourists coming on the island during the summer months. Mm -hmm. And uh, a great deal of those tourists, I would say a good 75% were, were Canadians that lived either on Vancouver Island or in Vancouver, mm -hmm. and uh, they're just not going to come. Right. So the businesses here in, in, on the island are going to suffer a great deal. Right. And, and also, the safaris are going to suffer in the long run, too, because even now, the people that live here, yeah. they're walking on. they got pool cars. Yeah. The, the people, number of cars going across, and that's where they make most of their money is the higher mm -hmm. cost. They're, they're just not getting that uh, business. Okay. That's, Okay, thank you for that, Jerry. And Drew, I want to give you a word on that. You were talking. Okay, about. well, I, I would really like the uh, public to uh, know that the stakeholders asked the the uh, minister to to roll back that ferry increase, and I'd also like them to know that the minister said no, categorically. We asked them to limit it to ten percent. Mm -hmm. The minister said no. Mm -hmm. We asked them to take it to no more than twenty percent, and the minister said no. And he said, basically, that you're all fat cats out on the island. And the answer is just no. Why can't you get used to it? And okay. I just don't understand that attitude. And Vaughn, you were nodding a lot through that. I mean, you've been observing. Dan Miller's not known to be, uh, you know, a shy guy. And uh, he's just bailed out a pulp mill in his riding. Do you think the two things are going to be tied together? Uh, you know, a couple hundred million for pulp mill? Well, it should be tied together in people's minds. Again, the government, where is the government's no subsidy policy on that pulp mill? It's not economic. It's not viable. Uh, it's just a political decision because Miller needed it for his riding. So right. there it is. Okay. We're out of time, but I want to thank all three of you. It was a very interesting uh, session. Thank you. And, thank uh, you, Drew. look forward to seeing what happens at the demonstration this afternoon. The first of many. First of many. Oh, maybe you'll succeed. Who knows? We'll be right back. Call to order Rogers Me TV now and you could win a trip to historic England. I'm so into history. Or one of ten Sony home theaters. There's over $300,000 in prizes, including a grand prize of $50,000. The earlier you enter, the more chances to win. And with 16 channels for as little as $5.99, you can't lose. Order Me TV today to win. Call 1-888-ROGERS-1. Uh, life for him was always being hooked up to either a feeding tube or a dialysis machine. An organ donor registry has been introduced in BC that replaces all previous ways to indicate your wishes for organ donation. The donor has given Nicholas a very special gift, a chance at a normal, better quality life. To sign up, you must fill in a registration card and return it to the BC Transplant Society. This was a, a new road for all of us, it's a new beginning. This Christmas, go wireless. Only a BCTEL Mobility Center has all the latest in wireless communications. Personal pagers, cell phones, and digital PCS. All at over 80 locations. This Christmas, be free. BCTEL Mobility. America, millions of you have skinny hair. Stop hiding it. From Conair Volume Control, you've got the Big Curl Setter. Five soft surface jumbo rollers with super clips go from skinny to full of body. Nobody's bigger in hair than Conair. America, millions of you have skinny hair. Well, stop hiding it. From Conair, get the Big Curl's Hot Air Curling Iron and Brush. Styles as it dries, brushes in volume. Nobody's bigger in hair than Conair. Judge Creever recently made recommendations to the federal government in the wake of the tainted blood scandal, but his recommendations almost exclusively focused on AIDS and HIV, which leaves the question, what will the provincial governments do about hepatitis C? We'll talk about that tomorrow. 
And today, as we heard from our guests, uh, that the protests against BC Ferries will continue until the government changes their direction. Now, you should know that the current direction of the government is not actually being driven strategically by the BC Ferries people. It's being driven by cabinet. That's unusual. Usually, if you have a Crown Corporation, they should at least be able to develop their own 10-year plan. But this government has to question their priorities. How can they come up with all that money for a pulp mill in Dan Miller's riding and have nothing for the BC Ferries users? It doesn't make any sense, especially since the pulp mill may cost tens of millions in the future. They've got to get this one right. I'm Judy Tayabji. That's my opinion. What's yours? It's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. Here it is. You didn't like that? Check TV. Today on Canadian Living TV. Erasing wrinkles with laser treatment. Maternity clothes with style. Great formal wear from Calgary. A modern hairstyle for women on the go. And coffee talk with Ann Lindsay, never mind. Hi, welcome to Canadian Living TV. I'm Samantha Houston. It's pretty tough to figure out how old anyone is these days. I think it's partly because I'm getting old too.